everyone. Happy Friday. Thank you for joining me here tonight. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. That's 9.30 Eastern and 6.30 Pacific. Uh, it's a time that we can relax and craft together for about an hour. Uh, and I work on projects from beginning to end, so you can be part of the whole process along the way. Uh, so tonight, I thought we'd have a little bit of fun. Uh, I have I have uh, these super large cones of embroidery floss in the shop right now for pre-order. I'm going to be placing an order for them on on Tuesday for just penguin and fish general stuff, and I thought I'd open it up to you guys as well. So I'm having a, a pre-order for these through Monday, and then I'll be placing the order uh, from DMC on on Tuesday. So I thought we could play around with some different things. We've been, uh, I've had some questions here like, can you knit with it or crochet? Uh, so I thought we'd just play around with it. Um, so the first thing I want to show you is my I Love Home quilt. So this is one of those unfinished projects that uh, has been sitting around. So this is one of our Finish It Fridays. We're going to have to work on this again. But I thought this was a good example of like red work but with a color, our own color. So I used, I used my pretty coral orange color for that. A uh, red work is when you do an embroidery project that with just all red floss. And there's also blue work that's all blue floss, black work, white work. Um, it's all embroidery with one color floss. And that's what I ended up doing for the I Love Home quilt by Jacqueline Steves. So I thought I'd break, ooh, I thought I'd break that out again to show you guys. So this is kind of an example of what red work looks like, but with a different, different color, with my favorite color. So, and that we did a little applique in there too. But I just think like the one color just ends up looking so, so sweet. So, uh, so everything that was the house I did um, with the, let's just fold this up, with the, floss and then like all the flower details I did with applique. Oh, I like that one. I think that one's my favorite one. Cute! But it is just kind of a really nice um, way to do it. And actually it goes so fast to embroider when you just do one color because you don't have to, first of all, all your decision making goes away, which is relaxing on its own. Uh, but it goes faster because you're not changing colors so often. You don't have to, yeah, make those choices. So uh, embroidery goes faster that way. All right, so uh, I'm gonna flip you around and we will try doing a couple different things. I wanna knit with this. I have that started just to show you. I wanna crochet uh, and I want to make a tassel uh, like we did the other night. And I have the Clover Pom Pom Maker, which I haven't, I bought this and I've never opened it yet. And uh, I'd like to give that a try to make a little, a little uh, floss pom pom. Oh, Pam, yours is at the same point. Your, your I love home quilt. Yeah, all it needs is a back, right? It just needs some batting and a back and a binding. Ugh, that means there's quilting involved too. So there's a lot of work yet. <laughs> the front is done, so that makes it feel like it's a ways along. I'm gonna end up with a bunch of finished fronts, aren't I? Ah, we're gonna have to get those together. But anyway, I'm gonna flip you guys around and we'll get started. Poor little I Love Home quilt just sitting, sitting around. Oh man, your mom just finished her 50 state bird and flower blocks. Oh, that is awesome. Those are pretty. All right, so here is the cone of floss. And I did start knitting it. Um, I just, uh, was playing around and I realized a couple things. I have never knit anything this small. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, so I just haven't used thread this small for knitting or needles this small for knitting, which was a little bit of a surprise for me because, um, because I crochet with thread smaller than this pretty often, so. In, in my head, it was the same thing. Like, I must have knit, but I did it. Like, I, it definitely feels different in my hands. You could get a white cone and use different dyes to color. Oh, I bet you you could. Yeah, it is just, it's 100% cotton. So um, you should be able to dye it and do stuff like that. So I started, I just, this is just 
knitting back and forth, and I tried to start a little rib, but that looks kind of funny. I only stitched um, 10, 10 um, I only have 10 stitches on here, and I think the rib would look better if I had it longer. Um, I'm using, what size needles am I using? These are the smallest, these are those collage interchangeable needles, so they pop off, um, and I can put different ones on, and they're the square ones, so they're the collage square interchangeable. These are US two or 2.75 millimeter ones. They were the smallest ones in the set here. I'm gonna just knit back and forth. I'm not gonna do the rib anymore. I'm gonna do that thing where you slip. Is this correct? I, you know, I haven't done this. I haven't, I'm not like a knitting pro and I know some of you guys here are. Um, when you slip the first stitch that makes like your edge look a little bit nicer, you do that from right to left, like purl-wise like that, right? I think so. All right, and then I'm just going to knit, and I'm doing the continental style of knitting here, where my working thread is in my left hand, and oh man, apparently I can't talk and knit at the same time. So one thing I noticed when knitting, oh yes, okay, so Genesis, yes, um, you slip that, and I only slip the first stitch. I don't slip the last stitch, right? I just, I keep knitting. If that's not right, let me know. I mean, I'll probably just, I don't know what I'm gonna do with this. This could be, you could do like little um, face wash things or face pads with these, like make a little face scrubby. I just figured it'd be cute to like knit little scarves for, you know, little figurines that are hanging around the house or something. Oh, I forgot to slip this one. Oh well. <laughs> so uh, uh, the one thing with knitting this is that it is six strand embroidery floss, right? So you have to just make sure that you get all those all those strands. Um, otherwise you'll have like a loose little loop hanging there. Oh yeah, Nolene, I have not you know, I get the emails yet. So for, so Mass Drop is where I got these. So Mass Drop, um, and they have, you know, they have like a lot of cool stuff on Mass Drop, right? But um, yeah, I haven't been paying as close attention to it, which makes me think that maybe they're not doing as much crafty stuff anymore. Um, I'll have to check because that's where I got my, my, cordless iron for a little cheaper. So what, what mass drop, it's now called just drop, drop, not just drop, it's called drop. Uh, and they have like little like flash sales of different products in different categories. So uh, that's where I got these knitting needles, you know, so you get them for a little cheaper for a limited time. Oh, pocket squares and men's, that'd be cool. Oh, they deleted it. Okay, Nora. Nora says they deleted the craft com communities. Because I check. I get the emails still. And uh, yeah, it, it seems to be, be slim on the craft stuff. So they actually dropped it completely. Oh, that's so sad. I really had a, uh, a fun time getting stuff from there. Yeah, the, Kathy says they're not the same. They sell a lot of knives. Yeah, they sell like a lot of outdoorsy stuff. It was kind of a weird mishmash to begin with. Like it had, you know, quilting supplies and, and knitting supplies and stuff. And then, you know, like hunting supplies and then like, you know, Magic the Gathering gaming cards and computer stuff and headphones. So it was a weird mix. So maybe they're just, maybe they're just deciding that, okay, we're more of like a camp gear place or something. Yeah, I don't know. Well, that's a bummer. Yeah, I got my, um, my grippets from there. And, uh, yeah, dang, that was, now that I'm listing them, I got a lot of stuff from there. All right, there. Now, like, this definitely looks cuter, just the knit back and forth. That's, that's this area down here, and that's what I'm doing up here now. Um, when I tried to do that rib in the middle, which is like two knits and two pearls, that was looking kind of weird. Um, but just the just the the knit back and forth um, looks pretty cute. I'm gonna do one more row. Actually, this cast off. I'm gonna cast this off. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this, but it's kind of cute. 
and will I'm gonna try uh, crocheting. Oh, but I was I was gonna say the one thing that I that oh I, I did say that already. It's six strand embroidery floss, so you gotta just really be careful when you're knitting it to um, to be sure that you're grabbing all of the all the bits. Ooh, let's see how well I can cast this off. You can kind of tell that I have not, when I got these knitting needles out, they felt so foreign. Um, like I haven't knit in ages, and plus I haven't knit anything this small. Uh, but I gotta get, gosh, I'm, my unfinished projects are, are piling up, but I, I was gonna say I gotta get my little lamb pillow done, that knit bobble sheep. I think I just have to do I have to do the tail and the feet, and then I gotta make like that pillow insert. I was gonna make a pillow insert out of black fabric and then stuff that, um, and then s put that in the knit pillow so you can't see the stuffing come out of it. Um, and so you can't like pull stuffing out of it. All right, here I see I didn't, didn't grab everything all right. Ugh, gonna lose the stitch. My strands are getting away from me. Alright, I might be doing something weird here. Oh well. Um, but I want to try crocheting with this yet tonight. Oh man, these strands. I keep losing a stitch and, I'm, and I know I'm not getting, putting these stitches on the right way. That's all the stuff I'd still like to learn how to do better with knitting. I just need to spend like a whole, there we go. A whole period of time learning all the ins and outs of knitting. I gotta take that on as a project again. I'm good at following directions with knitting, but thinking about it on my own, I'm not as good with. You're afraid the splitting would make knitting much of this a real horror? I mean, if you are, I mean, you know, it's like knitting with other things that have a lot of strands, although with six strand embroidery floss it's not twisted up as tight as, you know, other other threads and stuff, so it's definitely doable. It hasn't been that much of a bear for me really, and you get used to it too. It's just a matter of like how you, you just put your needles in a little bit differently and, you know, you adjust, you adjust for it. Like sometimes I, I help my thread around a little bit so I'm not like trying to stab at it and, and splitting the thread. You just, you just adjust. All right. So there's this little itty bitty guy. <laughs> oh, I'm so sad about a mass drop now. Oh well. Not like I needed to buy more stuff, right? I've never tried that for knitting, Jenna, um, conditioning thread with wax. Oh, this is soft though. It is a, it is 100% cotton, so I don't know, it feels really nice afterwards. There, that could be like a little, I mean, this is a little bit small, but it could be like a little face scrubby if you made them a little bit bigger. Kind of like it. It'd be fun. It'd be fun to just keep making a whole pile of them. Project to do while you're watching movies. So anyway, so that's what knit looks like. And again, with, you know, whatever my skills of knitting are. And you can use a, a tighter needle, maybe, maybe a smaller needle. But that was kind of fun. Little swatch. All right, I want to try some crochet. And again, this without a pattern in front of me feels a little goofy. Should we do like a pretend doily. Let's do a pretend doily. So we'll work in a circle. Yeah, okay, we'll, we'll work in a circle. So I'm just totally making this up. Let's do eight stitches, okay? So that's one, two, three, four, five. So I have crocheted, um, hold on, six, seven, <laughs> Hey, I have crocheted with uh, embroidery floss like this before. So this time I'm using a US uh, 4 1.75 millimeter crochet hook. And that seems to work pretty well for... Oh, I'm going to just join it right here. I'm bad at joining stuff in crochet. 
Um, but that seems to work pretty well for, for crochet. So, all right, let's do, <laughs> let's do some double crochets. So let's do, oh gosh, you guys, I don't even know if I know how to do a granny square off the top of my head. That's, that's the crazy thing. All I've done with crochet lately is doilies, like literally doilies. So let's do, I don't know, however many double crochets fit in here. Let's keep count though. So I'm going to start, oops, see there, I'm splitting it a little bit. Oops, let's do that again. All right. I'm going to start with three chains. And now let's do double crochets all around in here. So for a double crochet, I'm wrapping it around once and then I'm going to go through the middle. So I'm looping that through and then I, then I end up with these three threads. You go through two. Yeah, that's going to get some getting used to two. And then you go through again for two. All right, wrap around. Yeah, literally all I've been making is doily. So this feels comfortable to me. This feels this feels like home a little bit. But actually, this is a this is like triple the size of the floss that I've been using lately. I've been just using that twelve weight embroidery embroidery floss. So this is actually much or the twelve weight uh, sewing thread. So crocheting with this it feels huge in my fingers, <laughs> just huge. And I think, you know, so there is kind of a standard size. Well, I mean, you can go to Joann's and buy a whole big thing of crochet thread and like a white. Um, ooh, this is a lot of, a lot of double crochets here. Uh, and this is maybe a little bit thicker than that thread. Oh wow, I'm like full on doilying this. I guess I didn't need a loop that big in the middle. You can go for a little bit. Three trebles, two chains, repeat four times, three chains, up to the next row. Okay, how do you how do you start just like a a circle in the middle? Gosh, yeah, it's been forever since I, I have done a granny square before. <laughs> But probably like a decade ago. I did actually do a round granny square thing and I covered uh, um, I covered some stools with um, that round granny square and it's just really 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 cute. Oh you crocheted a hat today with chunky yarn? Yeah fast and easy that's that's for sure that's nice. All right I'm gonna call this the last stitch and we will join that. Let's spread them out a little bit. We'll join that with the top of the crochet three. All right, that worked. So this is just like going through all the stitches at once. All right. Now what should we do? Should we do Let's do a couple little like chain stitch loops to make like a fun little loopy. You can make like snowflakes out of this. Oh, Lucy, I do know how to do the magic circle. Um, I actually really like using that. Just in, lately in all the directions of doilies that I've been doing, they do it this way. But I do, I, I have done the magic circle where you can adjust it to any size you want. And that does make things easy. All right, I'm just trying something. I'm going to, I'm going to crochet five, three, four, five, or chain stitch, and let's, let's just go in the next loop, a single chain, or a single crochet. I'm making up a doily right now here, people. All right, one, two, three, four, five, Should we go in the next? Let's skip one. I'm totally changing my mind as I go, which is not <laughs> gonna get me an equal looking doily, but it'll be it'll work. One, two, three, four, five. 
<laughs> it's just fun knowing that there's this giant roll next to me here, though. Alright, I'm gonna skip that next stitch. Come on here again. There, see, I'm making like these cute little, cute little loops. Oh, goodness, Jackie. Not fun. Gus, I have tried tatting once. And uh, um, I got a little kit for it. And it's something I would, I think I would like to try again. Um, it was difficult because I had just written instructions. I, I don't even, I'm not even sure they had pictures. Uh, and I was determined that I'm going to figure this out just from these written instructions. And that was a mistake. That took me all day, but I did figure it out. Um, it was just such a weird concept of slipping the shuttle past the thread. I don't know. It, it was goofy in my head, like in a way that I wasn't expecting that that's how it was done. Uh, something I would try again, but holy cow, that first little session of trying to do that was, was difficult. But yeah, this is actually, it, it looks very similar to tatting, but tatting is um, kind of maybe even a little cleaner than crochet looking wise. It, it has um, like a lot of little, it's just like a lot of little knots together. All right, let's just, I didn't quite do this right, but we're going to fake it. So I'm just going to kind of, Join it here. Oops. All right, and then I'm going to use just some slip stitches to crawl up to this next, the top of this next row. And I'll just do one more loop around this because I'm kind of liking it. <laughs> All right, so now I'm kind of at the top of this loop. Let's bounce around again. I think, why don't we do like six stitches now? Jenna, that would be fun. It would be neat to give that a try again. Oh yeah, ring chains and, and picos. That's right. That's, that's feeling familiar now. One, two, three, four, five. Oh yeah, we could do a little pico here. Okay, let's do that. So, all right, I'm gonna try this again. Gosh, it's been a long time for that. So, all right. Uh, the neat thing about crochet is that you can just pull it out like that and no, and you just have that single loop so you can get back to, back to it really easy. All right, here's that final. All right, so let's do two chains, then a pico, which is like three, and then two more chains. So, okay, so one, two, and then the pico is like one, two, three, and then you have to like hook it back into the other one, right? And then just like a slip stitch. I'm trying to remember how to do this. And then one, two. And then we're gonna just single chain in the next loop. There, so a pico is kind of like this little, little nubbin little nubbin there. Oh, we are making like a tiny snowflake. I'm, I'm totally digging it here. So we're going to just go around this loop and I'll, I'll tie it off and we'll have a baby snowflake. All right. So one, two, okay. Pico is one, two, three, and then a slip join. All right. And then two more chain stitches. One, two, and we'll single crochet in the next loop. Cute! Cute, cute! <laughs> it's so cute. I, sh I could have maybe done three chain stitches instead of just the two because it feels kind of like it's stretching a little bit much, but um, like this row feels loose and this feel feels stretched, but who cares? I'm making this up as we go. So one, two, okay, one, two, three, slip, all right, all 
it would be fun to just crochet a bunch of these for Christmas. Like, ooh, like a, that pretty, like a pretty pale blue or something and just do a pile of snowflakes like this. That'd be kind of neat. Again, another good um, British Bake Off uh, project. Actually, but then you're not watching it. So if you guys didn't see, there's uh, the on uh, Netflix, they have the holiday British Bake Off on again, just two episodes, but still, I uh, like watching that. Ooh, a little lapel pin, that'd be kind of cute. One, two, one, two, three. Too much thread there. Two. So definitely slower going around the second time around. Oh, we just have uh, three more, it looks like. Okay, one, two, one, two, three. Pico, just a little nubbin bump. One, two. I would love to design my own doily with like a whole floral motif or something in it, like all gridded out. I think that would be kind of neat. We'll see. One day I'll want to do it enough that I'll stop whatever else I'm doing and and sit down and try and design it. All right, one more to do. <laughs> it's cute. One, two, okay, one, two, three. This is comfortable for me. I mean, what, just because I've been doing this for a while, these um, little crocheted doilies, uh, with small floss like this. Um, again, it, it does have the six strands, so you gotta deal with that. Or I'm gonna just slip into here. We will tie this off. Let's get that loop through this loop. Come on now. Put some tension on there. There we go. Alright, so I just have to weave in those ends, but there we go. We got like a cute little <laughs> fun little doily thing. So I could starch this and really get it snowflakey, like really get those picos to stick out. Um, that'd be kind of fun. I have done that before. Um, made like little snowflakes like this and starch them, and then they actually keep their shape and you can hang them on the tree and stuff. That turned out cute. Oh, I really like this. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we got our weird, our weird knit swatch, which is wacky and our super cute little crocheted uh, doily so far. Uh, I want to try making a, uh, um, a tassel uh, like I did the other night. Oh, I, I think I think you're right, Joe. It's definitely softer, and I think the reason for that is that it's not as tightly twisted. So crochet cotton is very tightly twisted. You wouldn't be able to separate the strands, which makes it a whole lot easier probably to stitch with. But, you know, you just got to pay attention, and, you know, if you have one little strand sticking out, it's not going to be the end of the world. But, yeah, it is, it is very soft. Really, really soft, actually. It feels nice. Nice and silky. All right, uh, let's make a tassel. I'm pretty excited about this. So, uh, oh, and I also got <clears throat> some of my jewelry making supplies, which I don't really do, but every once in a while <laughs> it calls for it. So I have some pliers here and a jump ring. I'm gonna throw a jump ring on this tassel and then I can stick it on my bag or something. So now right now, um, I'm just using my lock lock ruler for this. Right now I have, um, the cone is just sitting on the table like this, but when I'm using a lot of floss, ideally you want to pull like the thread so it's it's coming off the top of the cone like this. Um, so I'm actually going to set it on the floor because then I can get that upright position and then it 
then I can keep going and it's, it's never gonna stop. Ooh, and I wanted to show you guys a way to make like super duper silky, silky um, tassels with embroidered floss. Oh gosh, that's probably a lot already, isn't it? Um, let's do a little bit more, why not? Okay, uh, let's see, I gotta remember how to do this now. Okay, I'm not gonna cut it yet, but I am going to, cause I'm gonna want a little bit to tie it off in a bit. Let's grab a jump ring. We'll see, let's <laughs> see how this goes. I think I might've put a lot, a lot of floss on there. So I'm gonna grab these, both these pliers. I think you can actually use a normal pliers. I just happen to find these with my jump rings. So I got them out. So I'm going to open up this jump ring. So this is like what jewelers use to attach, you know, pendants to a chain or something like that. And a lot of times at nice jewelry stores, they'll weld them shut when they're, when they're all done. I'm going to just try and I think I'm going to take this off or I'm going to just go right to the end. Actually, I'm just going to take it off. I was thinking I could slide this jump ring on beforehand, but I think it might be easier just trying to do it like this. It's a pretty big jump ring, but it is kind of a lot of floss too. There we go. So we got it all the way around there. That's all we needed to do. This can be squished together now. Um, I am going to squish these back. There, see now I can hook it to like another jump ring and put it on on my bag as a zipper pull or something. Ideally that would get welded shut, but or glued. You can probably glue it. But there we go, that's what we're gonna do. And now um, I am going to twist the tassel bit around. So I'm gonna go down a little bit and I'm going to twist it around up towards up towards the top. So I'm kind of wrapping around this little bit here a bunch of times, nice and tight. You can actually just kind of maybe even rotate this underneath so that um, the closure of it is underneath. All right, that'll do. You end up at the top like that, and I'm going to snip a little bit, and then I need to get a needle. So let's get Zeb out here. All right, I'm going to just use one of my embroidery floss needles here. All right, ooh, let's try and thread this and hold. <laughs> hold this at the same time. Probably didn't plan this out quite as well as I could. There we go. I still want to try that pom-pom yet. All right, so we're going from the top through all of this mass and then out the bottom and that should hold, hold this loop in place or these twisties. So there we go. Twist it around like that. Here's our loop at the bottom. We got it around our little, I don't need the needle, around that jump ring so we can hook it onto a necklace or something like that. So now I am going to um, cut this off. I mean, I could have just cut through the loops, but since I kind of put it together already, I'm gonna just grab my super nice scissors here and we're gonna full on just cut the bottom off. There we go, easy peasy. <laughs> uh, so one thing you can do to make this super silky like, you know, right now it, it's like all the embroidery thread bits, right? I mean, it looks like embroidery floss, right? It looks like the six strands. You can take a comb. Um, all I could find was like one of these um, curly guys and you can hold, hold the top and just brush it out. Just keep turning it, keep brushing it. Try not to get, you know, don't accidentally grab up here. But what this is doing is it's separating all the six strands of embroidery floss into the single strands, you know, like how we separate it when we're embroidering. And oh, it's gonna get super silky here. 
There, okay, I'm gonna just trim, trim it a little here. But look how different it is. So now, now it's all the single strands and look how just silky it became. Um, you know, all the strands going in one direction like that. Just really, really, really pretty. A little bit like there. <laughs> so there you go. So that makes it actually look, I think it makes it look expensive and, and pretty, pretty then when you brush it out like that. But that's, that's all that all you do to get it super duper shiny. But dang, doesn't it look like super fancy now? You can put little charms on here, you know, this on a necklace. I mean, that's a legit piece of jewelry, you know? <laughs> so, all right. Uh, Robin, we are just playing around with the six strand embroidery floss, like all the different things you can make. Uh, but these tassels, tassels with the embroidery floss, it really does turn out pretty. I really like it. <laughs> I'm obsessed with this. There we go. Nice. Okay, so the last thing I would like to try, ooh, looks fancy, is I want to try this clover pom-pom maker. So I haven't even opened this yet. There's a staple. There we go. Okay. So this we open up and we wrap around it a bajillion times, and then with our awesome scissors, we cut it and tie a little thread around it. So this is like, you know, you can make a pom-pom like way easy. You don't need this crazy jobby to do it, but it's kind of fun. Okay, so, oh, I have to wrap it around both, don't I? Yeah, okay, all right, I get it. And then this one as well. So we got basically our, our top and our bottom going. <laughs> all right, let's give it a go. I, I, I've never used, I've seen this contraption before. Like I've seen it. Um, I've seen people use them, but I have never done it myself. So <laughs> let's, and I want to get it nice and thick and I'd love to like brush it out like this to make it all shiny. So I think, I think I just start wrapping around so anywhere really, right? Because we're going to trim all this down later. Right? We just get this real thick. Get my scissors out of the way. Nope. <laughs> Cause we just go around and around. And actually this might be a good way to use up other embroidery floss too. I might throw in a couple little specks of other floss in here. I think that'd be kind of fun. I am doing this right in, aren't I? I close it up and then, then I cut it through this groove and then we tie a thread. Let's see, I have, <laughs> This is my other random embroidery floss within my reach. So I am going to uh, just, <laughs> what do we got here? We got, a, oh look, we got a tiny bit. We got just a speck of, of this color. Let's, let's wrap that around. There, and cover it up with some orange. <laughs> We're gonna get tiny little bits of other colors in here. Oops, shoot around the edge there. I think this might take a while because you really want this fat, don't you? I mean, I guess I've never done this. I'm gonna do the other side yet too. Ooh, this might be a whole freaking project. Man, those people doing pom-poms, they're going to work here, aren't they? I suppose maybe they're not using thread this small, but still. I'm excited to use my Kai scissors with this, like my super fancy, happy scissors. All right, let's, let's, oops, sorry, you guys. Let's twist in some other random color. <laughs> I think this is going to be the fun part where we just have some random colors popping through. Use that more of our um, Little Felt Village extras. The thing is, if you, if you don't do a lot on here, I think your pom-pom ends up being kind of airy and 
you need a lot on here if you want a nice dense pom-pom, I, I believe. I don't know. Like I said, I've never used one of these guys before. I have made pom-poms, just not, not with this. So this, we're, we're using up a pile of embroidery floss. Let's, you know what? Why bother separating these? Let's just wrap them both. <laughs> we're gonna get random colors in here. All right, let's wrap some coral back around it. All right, this is starting to look like a whole lot, so let's let's uh, stop it. I suppose I just cut it, right? And now we close up that side, I guess, right? Seems legit, right? <laughs> All right, now let's uh, let's do this side. Start slow and I feel like I'm doing this the opposite direction that I did before. Feels funny. But yeah, so my cone of floss is still on the floor. This would go through a whole lot of embroidery floss if you just used skeins, I'm thinking. I'm excited for this though, I want to see what it looks like. Oops, look, I got another little bit caught down there. I don't know if it's, like, it doesn't really say, the, I mean, the more thread, I've seen, I've seen people do it with oodles of, of yarn and stuff on here, so I think you can just go as much as you want. I think the trick is you gotta have a scissors that can cut through it. I think that's kind of a big part of it. But if my kite, if my nice sewing scissors can't cut through it, then then I don't know what other scissors could. All right, let's let's get the rest of this is this is the rest the remaining um, floss from uh, the little felt village. So I won't have any of that anymore either. So we're using that up. on there and wrap it around, hold it down. We are going to make a mess <laughs> here too because uh, we are going to trim this down so it gets all fluffed up or so it, you know, if you trim it smaller and smaller I think you get closer to the dense, uh, to have like a more dense pom-pom uh, as well. So I think it's not all about how much you put on, it's how small you trim it too, I, I believe. At least that's what it seems like from what I've seen other people do it. <laughs> yeah, children would come in handy for this process. Yeah, give them a a movie in, or not, not even a movie, but like it's the time of a movie, like just do this for an hour. <laughs> I don't know if they last an hour. It'll be interesting with these other flecks of color and what that's gonna look like. I'm excited. This will be fun. I've been waiting to use these forever and I just haven't and I'm like, oh, gotta find them. I have that book uh, where you can actually, it shows you how to make these into like, where once you trim it, it looks like an animal. Like it'll look like a bunny face or a bear or something um, just from where you place these extra colors. I think that's pretty fascinating. I'd like to give that a try sometime. But so here's our first, without learning how to do it, um, session, which is kind of kind of my way of learning, right? I like just jumping in first, giving it a go, and then like, okay, this was difficult, or this part didn't work very well. I bet you there's some tip or trick that I don't know um, to solve that.
in order to get it to improve. So I like I like just jumping in like this, and then and then learning after, then doing my research after. So I might have to break out that funny animal pom pom book after this. <laughs> maybe not with floss. Maybe we'll use yarn, some fluffy yarn. All right, this is looking pretty thick. Is it? That's about like the other one. So all right, I'm wrapping it up. Let's let's call it. So let's snip there. Get my cone back up off the ground. Ooh, that tassel is just really looking, looking cute, isn't it? Oh, just brushing it out is just so neat. All right, so now I close it. Okay, it doesn't really snap or anything. So now I think I cut around the edges, and it's being held in here, which scares me. Is it really being held in enough? Oh, this scares me. Uh, but then once we cut it, then we have enough space to tie the yarn around. Um, and then we can tie off the pom-pom and that's where we open it. Oh my gosh, this is scary. Oh, but this scissors, no problem whatsoever. But yeah, I could see if you didn't have a very sharp scissors, this would be kind of difficult. So all right, there's one side. Ooh, it's, ooh, it's kind of a tight fit right there. Oh, stay close. You can get the scissors like straight down in there too, which is nice. Okay, there we go. So now we, <laughs> this is crazy. All right, now we get a thread. I'm just gonna use more embroidery floss. So let's, I'm just gonna, let's just cut it. All right, so now I think we just go around where we just cut. There, like, see like that. We can just go around. Do I pull it tied with thread and yarn? So I'm guessing as we do this, it kind of opens, splits open the uh, these green bars a little bit because this tie has to get way down in there, doesn't it? Oh, there, yep. So it slid down through there, and now I'm I'm holding it tight. Oh, this is great because I can leave it shut while I do my second knot. That's always the hard part, right? You get the first knot, but then how do you keep it tight while you do the second knot? Ha ha! Let's do one more. Okay, I see why people like this. This is fun. Okay, there we go. Now we open it, and I'm gonna make a huge mess here. So I'm just gonna clear the area. All right, we just pop it open, I guess, right? Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, and then this side. Now what? Oh, it pops, it pops open. How does that work? Is there a button or something? Do I just pull really hard? Huh. Remove pom-pom from maker. Okay, you guys, I'm supposed to be able to pull this apart. Why can't I? Wow. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I got to really pull, I guess. There we go. Huh. That seemed like that part should have been easier. I guess it's together again now. Huh. All right. All right, so now we can kind of fluff this up, but I want to trim it down. Ooh, look at with those other colors. That's so cool. Oh gosh, I kind of feel like I should go around this one more time. I think I still have the little threads here. Oh gosh, yeah, that's scary. I guess we did use quite a bit of floss here. It's just such a big loop, but I guess it is holding that much floss. Oh, we can get a little tighter there, that's good. <laughs> oh no, that really did anything. This feels so delicate, but all right, let's start Let's just start trimming it. I want to trim it. Actually, let's not trim it. It's it's actually looking pretty dense. I want to try brushing it. Let's let's brush it and see if that does anything. Oh, it is. It's just looking. Um, so here's it brushed, where all the um, bits are separated. All the strands of embroidery floss are separated compared to over here where, where I haven't separated yet. It really kind of 
fluffs it up. So we'll still trim because obviously some of these are longer. I'm, I'm trying not to pull too hard because I'm scared that that middle knot is just gonna go away, but I don't know, I guess they're kind of delicate little creatures, these things. <laughs> oh goodness, looks silly. I'm gonna hold these two longer if it's just hang it from there. Oh, I think I'm gonna sneeze. Oh, a low, um, a loa one. I don't think I'm saying it. Aloma, I think. Oh gosh. Ah, oh, I'm sorry if you're in here. I totally am spacing on the spelling of your name. But yep, so I sent out the uh, cone of floss today, so that is out. Oh, Alright, just fluffing it up a little bit. We will take care of these long, long guys here. So the challenge is just making it cover up that middle area, right? I suppose you just kind of squish it around a bit. Used to make it with cardboard circles. Yeah, no, Lee, that's the only way I've really made it before with cardboard circles. This is this is the first, actually not even circles. I just wrap it around cardboard. I have done the car, the circle way before though. I guess that's pretty similar to this. Um, but yeah, this is my first time using this tool. All right, I'm gonna trim these little bits. And then I think we're basically done with this guy. Now I could keep trimming this and it'd get like smaller and more more dense. You can actually form it, like if I didn't want it a circle, if I wanted it more like egg shape or something for some reason, well, for Easter or something that might be kind of cute, I could keep trimming. I think this is probably where the bulk of this job happens. You're just kind of kind of sculpting it a little bit. Stop moving. There. Get that guy down there. But anyway, that's kind of cool. Look at it with the extra colors in there. That is just pretty adorable. Um, you can kind of see the thread where I tied it. Yeah, but I, I bet you if I keep working with it, um, that, that would, you wouldn't be able to see that as much. Just keep moving it together like this, back and forth over that line. <laughs> I feel silly using this brush, but it really is, really makes it cute where you, when you, um, Separate all those strands. Fluff it up. Okay. One last final trim around here. Gosh, yeah, I'm thinking whoever makes a lot of these is sneezing all the time. You'd almost have to wear a face mask if you have all of this little fuzz flying around everywhere. <laughs> you can get you probably end up doing that all day, but oh! Look how freaking cute this would be. Oh, yeah, like a little hat topper. Or this would be, oh, just imagine this on like a, a, a holiday gift or something. Like if you had like holiday colors, like how cute would that be on, on a present? Like if you just, here, like if this is a present. Look at this, even with the blue. Look how cute that is. And then you could wrap it, you could wrap the floss around a bunch of times. Oh, I love it. That is adorable. And you could just... You know, I like using the cone because you are using quite a bit of floss, right? But just using up some of my extra floss bits here and there. How cute with those extra little speckles. Even the black looks kind of cool. Okay, I'm, I'm like way loving all of these. The tassel, oh, look how shiny that is. Okay, you guys, uh, I am going to flip you around and we will call it a night. But this is a really, really kind of a fun look. And there's still tons left to do more. Um, this is fun though to play around with with uh, different ways you can use uh, a cone of embroidery floss here. So all right, I'm gonna flip you around. All right, here we are. So let me show you guys these again. So we did. Oops, sorry, a little crooked there. We did the little the knit. So our tiny little swatch. <laughs> this I think it would take a long time. Um, the little kind of mini snowflake doily we made. I mean, and now this I do all the time. I do um, little doily making. Yeah, and here's here's the cone again. So we still have tons of floss left over. Oh, and just a reminder: these are up in the shop through Monday. I'm doing a little. I'm ordering for penguin and fish, and I thought, 
why not, if you guys wanted a cone, um, I'm opening it up, my, my wholesale order, I'm opening it up to you guys. Uh, so that's up in the shop till Monday, because Tuesday I'll be placing that order. Um, here is the tassel. Those would be really, really kind of cute earrings. <laughs> or just like a necklace, like I'm wearing, I'm wearing this necklace just at the end would be so cute. Even with the, even with the, um, charm already on there, you could just add, you know, I, let's see if I can do that right now. Oh, I kind of, I kind of hid there. Okay, so I kind of can open that jump ring a little bit and I could probably, there we go. I'm going to put it on a necklace that I already have. Get on there. All right. In theory, I can place that back on, but there we go. So that's, that would look cute on it. Yeah. Like that's an already a necklace that I already have with a little charm. That would be cute. All right. <laughs> I really like that actually. Uh, and then here is our little pom pom. And I just, I just love how this turned out. And I think brushing it was, Kind of the way to go because look how just shiny and, and pretty that is it's not focusing really well here we go cute all those little speckles <laughs> oh i love it okay you guys thanks for letting me play around uh today with with my with my cone of floss <laughs> uh you know i'm just doing my normal embroidery with it but it was fun to to play around with it again i can see making more of these pom-poms that turned out awfully cute <laughs> So, all right, you guys, thanks again for joining me here, and I will, I'll get this up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies, but I will see you on Monday. So, have a great evening, have a great weekend, good night!